to episode number 77 of the Knitting Tees Woman podcast. I'm Lisbeth, your host, and this is a podcast which is all about knitting, sewing, usually other fiber crafts as well, but lately uh, those are the main things that I've been up to, so let's just keep it at that for now. Anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me. It's really good to have you here. Uh, there were some troubles along the way again, but I still managed to make it in May, and that's Still just one month after April, <laughs> even though it's a little later than I had hoped. Um, partially due to my computer crashing, so I couldn't do any editing, and a uh, cold, which stole my voice, which was really annoying. But uh, uh, my voice is back, or at least back enough to be able to talk to you guys, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Let's keep it this way. I'm really hoping for some nicer weather, by the way. Um, you can see it. I'm sitting here in a DK weight sweater and it is the end of May. Usually by now we've had had plenty of days of 20 plus degrees Celsius uh, days and not so much this year. I remember there was a day or two in March, early March <laughs> I think and maybe even February, I don't know but it's been a long time since we've had good spring weather. I typically like colder weather actually but now I'm kind of longing for summer <laughs> to come around which it probably will next week so fingers crossed I, I can do with a little bit of sunlight at the moment anyway let's get into uh, well first a little bit more about what I'm wearing today I am wearing a, as I mentioned before a DK weight sweater uh, which I knit out of seven colors of travel knitter DK a yarn which is a merino, 100% merino yarn I believe, that is hand dyed somewhere in London I believe. Uh, I purchased this the first time I went to Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which seems like forever ago that we could still go anywhere. Hopefully it's coming back soon. Things seem to be opening up here, so that's good. I like it. So the sweater that I'm wearing is uh, a pattern that I designed myself is uh, interlock uh, knitting which means that you uh, well you start off with a bunch of triangles which I can best show on my sleeve I guess because it's also on the bottom hem of my sweater but you you start up with the well first with a the hem then set up uh, triangles and then you pick up stitches along the side of what you've knitted and then knit kind of squares uh, in the opposite direction and then always uh, pick up stitches in the next well in my case in the next color which obviously you can do this with as many colors as you like um, you do not need to change color if you don't want to obviously um, then pick up stitches along the side of the next square like here and then knit it across and um, then pick up stitches on the next side and on, on the side of the, the square you knit stitches together with the live stitches from the previous color or round or whatever. Uh, anyway, I knit this quite a while ago so uh, you may have seen it before. Uh, I also like to wear it to festivals because uh, it stands out. I mean, I uh, like bright rainbow colors and uh, yeah. Uh, it's a fun technique that uh, apparently not many people have managed to knit a sweater out of and uh, yeah, that means it's recognizable. Although I have met my sweater twin at a festival in Norway once. Slightly different sweater, slightly different color, colors, but still rainbow and true. Anyway, um, yeah. Uh, also, I have had some questions regarding uh, the vaccination program here in the Netherlands, um, well, people who are high risk, uh, they had their turn first, which means people above a certain age and uh, then people with certain conditions and uh, we are working our way downwards in ages and I believe that people who are 47-ish now uh, have their turn for their first shot. So I'm 30, so I still have to wait a while, but. The prognosis for now is that in about, about a month I will have my first shot too, or at least an appointment for one. So um, 
yeah, I wish uh, things were going as fast as in the US here too. And then again, uh, I think I'm still blessed to live in the Netherlands compared to many other countries. So uh, yeah, considering I'm not really in a high risk group, uh, I think it's okay that I have to wait a bit. So let's get into what I've been up to. And first of all, I uh, want to show a project that I'm currently still working on. And this is a pair of socks for my son. And you may think this does not look like a sock yet, and that's correct. It looks like, um, yeah, just a piece of the, the leg part. And you may also think that it looks a little bit odd because there's two layers of sock here. And that's also, true. Uh, in fact, I am knitting these socks two at a, at a time, but also on the same needle. So it's kind of double knitting. Um, obviously, I stopped mid-row, which makes it harder to show this, but I can flip up one sock and the other sock is inside of there. So it, it's kind of like I'm double knitting. Also, I, I can see that I'm not completely mastering the technique yet because it looks like my socks are not turning out the same size. I mean, it's easy to, to keep them exactly matchy-matchy. I mean, they're never more than uh, a stitch apart in the pattern because of the way I'm knitting. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it seems like my inner sock is a lot bigger than my outer sock because apparently when I'm double knitting, I don't knit at the same gauge. So, uh, this is a fun technique to, to try. I saw a picture of this on Instagram a while ago um, from a lady called Juling Needles. And uh, yeah, it really inspired me. I really uh, wanted to try this technique as well. Um, to give it a shot, uh, it's kind of fiddly. I would not necessarily recommend it if you're going for speed because I don't think it's any faster than Knitting uh, regular socks also, as you can see, my socks, uh, well, I, I'm not sure to what extent you can see this, but I can definitely see and feel it, that one sock is a lot tighter than the other. Um, they are not the same gauge, which obviously will result in socks not quite the same size, unless you have feet that are not the same size. Uh, this is typically not something you would want. Also, it's recommended to to knit this with two different colors so you don't confuse your socks as easily, which might make it more useful. That would make it somewhat less annoying if the socks are not exactly the same size, so you would end up with two different colors of socks and um, one pair being slightly bigger than the other, but that would mean that you would still have to knit the entire thing twice. Um, but I'm stubborn and I thought I can do this in the same color because I know how to double knit. I have tried double knitting before, so uh, I'm familiar with that. And in this case, it's just the same as double knitting, except that you uh, don't knit the, the pieces of fabric together. So, uh, <laughs> it's a very interesting process. Obviously, I haven't come to the interesting parts of shaping yet so uh, so far it's relatively easy to knit this I will have to see how I feel about uh, the toes and uh, the heels and such but it's uh, it's been interesting and uh, one thing that it really did for me is it really spark my interest in knitting because uh, I felt like I was a little bit in a knitting slum I wasn't enjoying the projects I was working on as much. I was mainly working on a blanket that is behind me that I have made some progress on, but really knitting on a blanket with the cozy memory squares is a little bit too easy for me. Uh, sometimes, well, sometimes that's exactly what I need, by the way, so it's not a bad thing if you enjoy this kind of knitting. I mean, you do you, but sometimes I need something that is slightly more uh, keeping my mind of things, so uh, I, I need something that I really need to focus on a pattern and uh, this kind of did that too, I mean it's not really an inter a difficult pattern but still I have to pay attention to every single stitch to make sure that I 
do it in a um, correct way that I keep the yarns in, in front or in the back and whether I need to knit or purl uh, uh, it looks different on uh, the front and the back side so yeah uh, this this just sparked my interest a little bit more I'm not sure I will ever try <laughs> this again though because uh, mostly I find it pretty tedious I think I can knit two separate socks a lot faster than uh, if I try to do them uh, at the same time. Also, I have been fighting a little bit with uh, my skin. This uh, was Drops Fable yarn, which um, I purchased years ago when I uh, was still on a slightly tighter budget than I am now. Um, but uh, I hand dyed this. This, is, I, this may have been my first experiment with hand dyeing because I remember I was going for a, a color that was a little bit like the ink uh, from from your fountain pen. Like we had this very typical uh, bluish color uh, in school, so I was trying to go for that color. Um, and I think the tones are in there, and it's nice and not very like it's it's not a very solid color, which I like, but it's still similar enough throughout the skin. I think that. These socks will match pretty nicely. I'm knitting one sock from the inside of the skein and one from the outside of the skein, so that's uh, a guarantee for tangles. <laughs> uh, I would not necessarily recommend doing the same, but you know, sometimes you're just lazy. If you have one cake of yarn, you're not necessarily going to split them into two cakes, even though that might be the wise thing to do. Save you time in the end. Then, um, I was definitely on a uh, hype of more intricate patterns and I decided to knit another lace shawl which I have finished by now and it's also blocked and it's not just lace, it's also beaded lace. So this uh, uh, shawl is made out of uh, Borgo de Pazzi lace, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this correctly. I do not remember the colorway and I have been amazingly good at losing tags lately, so um, it I, I might find it, but I'm not sure I will. And it might also be in my notes on Reverie, although I'm not even sure I made a page for the, this project yet. So uh, if there is, it might be there. <laughs> if I don't have a page yet, then I will probably make a page while editing this podcast, but um, yeah. In that case, the the colorway number might remain a mystery forever. Or maybe I can find it in my purchase history, because I think I ordered this online from my local knit store. Anyway, so uh, the pattern is the Shield Maiden Lace Shawl uh, by Anna Victoria. And uh, as you can see, there are a lot of beads in there. Um, so uh, this pattern was inspired by the Lord of the Rings and especially by a character named Eowyn, I believe. Uh, there were some quotes from there in, in, in the pattern as well. I basically selected this by uh, yardage <laughs> because I had bought a single skein of lace yarn and I wanted to make a shawl out of it for my brother's wedding because I needed something that would go with my dress and in the end I decided not to wear that dress at all and make an entire new dress and wear another top <laughs> that I had previously knit on uh, that dress but um, this does go well with, with a dress that I have. Um, it has some of the bluish and purplish uh, tones in there. The beads I got from Korea Dream, which is a shop that sells a lot of beads and beading products, um, Dutch store, so I'm not sure if they ship internationally, but these are Miyuki seed beads, um, and uh, it's their galvanized eggplant colorway. So I think uh, that turned out nicely. Um, one thing I will say about this shawl is I uh, knit this pattern with needles one size larger than the pattern suggested. I did 
was watching the beginning, but uh, that also told you that size did not really matter, which is obviously because it's a show, uh, I mean, a, a smaller show, you can still use it, a larger show is also still usable. Um, but I expected this depth to be about 60 centimeters and it's about 45. So 60 centimeters, I believe it's 24 inches and um, it's about 18 inches deep in, in the center, uh, well, which is quite a bit smaller than I had hoped it would be. Obviously that's just because my stitches are smaller, but um, I did not realize that I knit so tight for a lace knitter. Apparently I do, or maybe it's a combination of the yarn and the needles. I don't know what it is, but yeah, it turned out a bit smaller than I had hoped. So maybe next time I will have to use larger needles. Crochet hook was the right size though, because it uh, fit perfectly through all of the beads. I had not had any beads that I couldn't get through. I used a 0.6 millimeter uh, needle crochet hook to put the beads on the on the stitches. And I like that this pattern actually specified whether you had to um, put on the bead first and then knit the stitch or put the bead on after you had knit the stitch. So sometimes that's not very clear. In, beaded uh, patterns and this pattern was nice and clear. There's about a thousand beads in, uh, in total. Nasty. And uh, even though I did not wear this to my brother's wedding, um, it's still a nice shawl and I hope there will be an occasion at which I can use it. So who knows? For now it will look nice on, uh, <laughs> on the shelf with all the other shawls that I hardly ever wear. There, there's really only a few that I wear a lot. Um, and one of them actually has a hole in there, so I may need, need to knit a replacement for that. That's uh, one of my few lace weight shawls, but it's a bit denser than this one, so it's not, not as open. I think that's pretty much the perfect, uh, perfect shawl, so I might knit it again. Maybe another color, but I like the color too. And can't show it at the moment because I don't have it here and it wouldn't look very nice because it needs a washing, but I like to wear it. <laughs> anyway, so um, after that I was uh, feeling a little bit more uh, for having a slightly easier project. So I need a flex uh, sweater, uh, which is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. Um, a free pattern uh, available through Ravelry as well. Um, the lace shawl pattern was also on Ravelry, although that was a paid for pattern. This one is available for free and I believe that most of you guys will probably have knit one or have heard of other people who have knit uh, one. I have previously uh, knit a lightweight version of this sweater uh, for my son and now I knit the one to two year old size in uh, a heavier yarn. I, this is uh, Lana Grossa Cool Wool Big. I needed uh, slightly more than one skein to do this project, which uh, means that I did try something interesting that you cannot really see in this project. Uh, but this uh, sweater I knit uh, while uh, using the helical knitting technique for the first time. Uh, I have heard about this for years. Uh, but I'm not really that into stripey projects, so I haven't really seen a point in using it so much yet. Um, but I thought it was fun to give it a try on this pattern because the, the this yarn is a hand-dyed version of a commercial uh, yarn, which you can just buy in uh, regular stores that carry uh, yarn of this brand. But... Um, yeah, because it's hand dyed, the skeins do not look as similar as they otherwise might. So I decided to alternate skeins throughout the project. And um, for alternating skeins, this is uh, a perfect technique, basically. So, uh, so, uh, so you join in a new color and uh, you knit until a few stitches before where your tail of the previous color is hanging. And then you knit with the other color over the top of the, the, the other color. Well, in my case, they are the same color. I mean, you can't really 
tell the difference. I, I think it doesn't look particularly stripy, but when I had the balls of yarn next to each other, they definitely looked somewhat different. So I decided to go for a safe option and, and alternate skins. Anyway, I uh, knit this sweater an inch longer than the pattern suggested because I feel like uh, my son has a long back. Uh, this should be one to two year old and I already feel like it's small and my son is almost 15 months now. So um, yeah, maybe we have a big baby that, that might be the case, but um, still, uh, if I were to knit this again, I would probably knit it somewhat larger, although it might still grow a little bit in no washing because I have not washed or even blocked this after I finished it. I finished it this morning, as in yesterday I finished the knitting and this morning I wove in the ends. Uh, so it's really a, <laughs> a newly finished object and uh, yeah, uh, it might still grow because it's knit to quite loose gauge. Um, I can see through the sweater a little bit this way, you probably can't because I'm looking towards light and you guys don't see light coming from my background. I hope by the way that this setup is a little bit better than it was the previous time because I wasn't really happy with uh, what it looked like uh, in the previous episode, but uh, yeah, I hope it's a little bit better now. Anyway, um, then there's one more knitting project that I want to talk to you about and that's the project that is well, slightly too easy <laughs> for me, apparently, or it, um, I, I'm, I'm just ready to be done with it, let's put it that way. I was very excited to, to start this because I uh, really did not want to think too much about what I had to knit <laughs> at the time when I started this, but now, uh, yeah, I'm looking more towards trying new techniques and things like that. Um, one thing that I have in mind is trying some brioche. Next, I have a book with patterns up on the attic, uh, and um, I will uh, probably look for a nice pattern and try some brioche next. But uh, now I also want to finish this blanket. Um, this is a cozy memories like blanket. It's not exactly following a pattern because I'm too stubborn for, the, uh, for this, but the idea is pretty much the same. You knit squares and you attach them to each other. I pick up stitches along the side of an existing square, pick up stitches uh, along the next side and then knit the square shape and then finish the yarn. And um, I decided to knit this blanket uh, 10 by 12 squares. And the exciting thing is that I'm now on row 12. So uh, it's the last row. I only have to do eight more squares. I already finished off the end on this piece and on the edge where I still need to knit blocks. You can see that I have left my tail because I feel like um, I can finish the work a little bit neater if I only finish this tail, weave it in, uh, after I'm done with all the knitting, but there's not going to be any further knitting uh, around this, so this is it. So I, I could finish the first tail, and I am happy to say that I am actually on track with uh, weaving in all the ends, because that can be very tedious. <laughs> I remember this sweater, I, I counted it at like 134 ends to weave in at the end, and I not a person who likes weaving in ends when you're done knitting because I feel like they, with socks I can already struggle that they're stewards <laughs> to, to weave in because I feel like I'm done and then you still need to weave in ends and yeah, that's simply not my favorite part of knitting. I know a lot of knitters uh, feel differently because they associate this weaving in ends with being finished and neatness and everything but um, yeah, I'm not one of those people. I'm very chaotic. I can finish a pair of socks and then weave in the ends months later. I will probably not wear the socks in the meantime. I mean, they need to be finished before I wear them or obviously before I give them away to a happy recipient. But, oh my. <laughs> Weaving in ends is not my favorite thing in the world. So I'm happy to weave in ends after every single square. Uh, now it's three ends per square. That's like, I can manage that. 
but like when it's 100 ends to weave in, yeah, I get overwhelmed and <laughs> I will just postpone my task. Very adult of me, I know. Anyway, um, on track towards finishing this probably before next podcast, but who knows? Uh, we will see what happens. Then there has been a little bit of sewing and I also noticed that my battery light is flashing, but since I'm like I don't have a fancy camera where I can see my own image when I'm recording, so uh, yeah, I only noticed this because my camera also only records for like half an hour, so by this you can calculate how much footage I've uh, cut out of the video, although it's not exactly one half of an hour. Anyway, I have also been sewing two projects. One is the dress that I mentioned before, and there is another project that I have made. And that's a coat for Sven, my son. And uh, yeah, he uh, can wear this in the winter time uh, because this is a heavily lined uh, uh, coat. Uh, the fabric for the outside is a polyurethane laminate or pearl fabric, so it should be waterproof. And the inside is is a bamboo. Bamboo, uh, well, please, I think it's called. Not 100% sure about that. And there's also another uh, volume layer in between, so it's quite a thick coat, so it should keep him nice and warm in the winter time. Um, I decided to make this coat twice. I mean, this one I actually made a while ago before the previous podcast, but in the meantime, I've made a second version of this. Uh, coat um, exactly the same pattern although I did make it one size smaller because this is definitely a little bit too big for him this is size 92 which means that um, it's suitable for kids that are approximately 92 centimeters tall I think he's around 82 83 ish uh, now uh, that's at least what, what his sizes uh, say he's definitely go, <laughs> growing a bit big for size 80 and is not quite size 86 <laughs> yet. Uh, that's the sizes that we use in, in the Netherlands, uh, but if you would translate those two ages that will be about 12 to 18 months, which corresponds to his age. So um, yeah, I made one just slightly smaller and in a summer version, so it has a lighter uh, lining fabric, but it's um, it's a dark color, so it's a dark navy blue uh, and, um, well, mostly black lining that I made in the meantime. And uh, it's not as thick, so uh, more appropriate for summer, although maybe I should have switched around the colors because this is more of a summer color than the other one. Anyway, it was fun to, to work with this and um, I actually will admit that I did break quite a few needles on on this because it was a heavy fabric and um, I sent my machine for repairs because of that because uh, yeah <laughs> uh, I started to notice that it was not running as smooth as I had hoped it would. Uh, second coat went a lot better but then there were also not as heavy layers of fabric because if you're trying to top stitch through like a double layer of this polyurethane thing and the inner fabric and that that's that's a lot of layers it's it's quite thick so it's not really that strange that it um, did not quite work out smoothly anyway i'm still very happy with the way this coat looks as a nice big hood Yeah, I'm uh, happy with it. Also, the pockets uh, turned out quite nice, I, uh, I think, if I say so myself. Um, the coat, the, the pockets are the same on the raincoat version that I made him, except that they do not, do not have a closing snap for the pocket, but I'm not really sure that my son really uses pockets at the moment, so I couldn't really be bothered to put in put in closures for the pockets because they stay close or close enough <laughs> um, 
Anyway, so yeah, that's uh, one of my sewing projects. There's one more project that I wanted to share with you and it's the dress that I wore to my brother's wedding, which I wish was a long sleeve <laughs> dress because due to COVID measures it all had to be outside and it was very windy and rainy and thundery <laughs> on the day itself. Still was a lovely wedding though and uh, it, it looked very nice and I'm very glad that I got to be there. Um, was one of the few guests who were allowed so uh, yeah, I was super thrilled to be able to be there. Um, but uh, here's the dress that I made for this occasion and it's I don't know if you can see the length of the skirt <laughs> but uh, yeah there's um, a more than knee length uh, skirt for me um, it uh, has no sleeves and uh, yeah it has, has some bus stars and, and I don't know what these darts are called. I believe these are the bus darts and these are called some other kinds of darts. I'm not, not quite sure. But it was the first time that I made a, a thing that has proper bus darts and I think I still have a lot of learning to do when it comes to placing them properly because uh, I noticed that the way they were supposed to be did look really awkward on me <laughs> when I tried it. So um, I tried it, tried like seeing to what point they should be pointing, but I had already cut out fabric, which is not the way you're supposed to do this. But um, you know, you can make mistakes. <laughs> and um, yeah, there were a lot of new techniques for me to to do uh, on this uh, project. I never really understood under stitching, which I did on this project, and. Uh, yeah, I must admit it really made a difference. Um, I also never really successfully installed an invisible zipper and <laughs> as you can see from the back side I still have a bit to learn about that because they're not quite <laughs> coming to the same height here but uh, you know... <sighs> Installing zippers is not my forte. <laughs> I still need to practice a little bit on that. Uh, and maybe more than just a little bit <laughs> actually, but uh, I'm, I'm still uh, happy with how it turned out I and mean, it was a nice dress to wear and this is on the back side anyway and uh, people should not be staring at how I've installed a zipper. Also, if you buy it in store, it does not necessarily look perfect as well. Fun story about this, this is an invisible zip that I uh, installed which is, well, if it were properly installed it should be pretty much invisible and um, so I asked my husband to go fetch me some invisible zippers for, for this project and he came home with a contrast color zip because I asked him to uh, pick a color that would match my sweater and he thought yeah but contrasting is matching too right so I was like no 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 not in terms of <laughs> invisible zips I um, yeah so uh, I instructed him to go fetch me a zip and I uh, realized that uh, this color of green still is not quite the color of the dress but it was the closest color they had apparently. So uh, yeah, that would have to do. I also asked him to pick up a black zipper, I completely forgot about that, uh, which was my backup in case there wasn't anything else and also black is the color that I'm pretty sure that I will use in the future. But you know, whatever. Uh, but this project was very nice to kind of up my sewing game. Um, there were these uh, darts involved, there was the understitching that I hadn't really done before. Uh, the pleating, I'm not so happy with how that turned out, so I'm not sure if I'll do that again or if I will do it again, I will look at how to do it again, because I'm not happy with how this turned out. I tried um, French seams for, for the side seams. I uh, did some manual un understitching uh, for the, the understitching in the armholes because uh, yeah you need to well you can't reach all the way with the machine if you're you're trying this so yeah I might only have done part, a part of the seam by hand but I decided to do the entire seam by hand and that was actually 
quite a nice experience. I mean, I used to look at hand stitching as tedious and uh, not something that I would enjoy as much, but I've, I think I've uh, changed my mind a little bit about that. And uh, I think it is it's strong and it's nice to, to have it be finished a bit more neatly this way. So I'm, I'm happy with how this turned out and I'm also happy that I've learned so many things that I can take with me to make a next version even better. So yeah, um, this is, uh, I do not really shop fabric by brand, but I went to a local uh, fabric store here in my hometown and it's uh, Van der Forst Modestoffe. So it's, uh, uh, it, I, this was just some party fabric that they had um, and it was only it, it was a very cheap fabric so, so that's nice I, I don't I, I think this is mostly synthetic fibers but um, which which I typically do not really like to wear but you know for a dress for a wedding I am willing to you know wear something different on my skin for a day Typically, I prefer in more natural fibers such as cotton or wool, obviously. Silk, I'm okay with too. <laughs> and bamboo and, uh, well, plenty of things, but uh, to me they should be natural fibers and not synthetic. But I, I like to shine for for the party dress and also it's, it's going to be something that I just wear on special occasions and not something that I will wear every day, so it can be shiny. I got a lot of nice comments uh, on, on the dress and I also made um, my son a matching, um, how do you call that, a, a matching tie, um, bow tie I think, uh, because we purchased a little suit for, <laughs> for the little guy uh, and um, uh, I made the bow tie out of scrap fabric from my dress so he matched with me. <laughs> that, uh, looked really cute although you could hardly see it for most of the day because as i said it was rainy and windy and we put on his coat and he was nice and snug and warm but you couldn't really see that we had purchased a, a suit especially for the occasion anyway that's life <laughs> oh um did i mention this uh, pattern is the little dress uh, which is uh, a pattern by Tilly and the Buttons, which I've made uh, plenty of uh, patterns from in the past. Um, like the skirt that I'm currently wearing is one of her patterns, although I've modified that heavily uh, <laughs> since because, you know, I'm me and I like to make skirts my way. Like I inserted the pocket, but not the pocket that she recommends in the book. So, uh, you know, I uh, tend to do things my own way so that they suit me. Anyway. Um, so uh, the pattern is by Tilly and the Buttons and it comes from the book uh, Love at First Stitch, I believe is the title of the book, um, which is a very nice beginner friendly uh, book on how to get started with sewing. So I believe that's everything that I've had to share with you. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I would like to thank you so much for having joined me. It was lovely to have you here to talk to and I hope you all have a lovely time. I hope to see you next uh, time. Bye!